Hello and welcome to the Auto Car Show. We've got something pretty special lined up today. It's the first ever four-door built by Porsche, the Panamera. It's big, it's bulky, but does it really have under the hood all that sporting heritage that comes with the Porsche tag? Well, what better way to find out than put it on a test track? That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Take it for a quick spin. Now, when you have a test track ahead of you, it's difficult to stand around and just look at the car because the road beckons you. But just as I got going, the gods seemed to be against me because the lovely sunny day became dark, grey and wet. Hmm, a wet track, a Porsche Panamera and the image of washing dishes at Porsche came up just too fast in my head. So I decided to wait it out a bit and look around inside. Once you're inside, you're going to realise that when it's raining as hard as it is today, this roof makes a racket but I guess you've got a pretty good music system to drown out the noise. Now there's loads of other goodies inside this, lots of things that I like. It's this entire cockpit kind of look that's inside here, lots of brushes of aluminium, the meters are very sporty, lots of buttons on the central console. It really gives you this plain like sports car like feeling when you're inside. So it doesn't feel like the luxury saloon that it is as well. It's building a lot of that sporting attitude on the inside and I can say I really like it. You sit low in the Panamera, much lower than in regular luxury saloons. But once you're inside, you just get blown away by the quality of all the interiors. I looked high and low, but I couldn't find one switch, one surface or plastic bit that I didn't like. The view from the driver's seat is really something else. A high centre tunnel runs through the length of the car and the layout of switches on it resembles that of a particular high-end mobile phone. You could argue that so many buttons can be confusing, but you get used to the logical layout quite easily. Behind the steering are five dials, just like in a 911, and the big rev counter dominates the others. The driving position is brilliant and the snug seats are comfy. It's just that the view outside is quite limited with that steeply raked A-pillar and the small high-set rear window. This is a pure four-seater, and that's because the central tunnel runs right through to the back, splitting the rear seats. The rear seats themselves are very comfortable with enough thigh support and good leg room. The seats are placed low giving head room but the problem is that it can get claustrophobic at the rear with the small windows and the tall front seats and the thick seat pillars that really limit your view outside. The rain showed no signs of letting up and I was itching to go. So I just got going. 400 bhp 4.8 litre V8 direct injection petrol is derived from the Cayenne. Panamera has a reduced height to keep the centre of gravity low to give it the sports car like performance. Plus, the version I was driving came with four wheel drive. That was some consolation considering that with a 5.8 second 0 to 100, this was one of the fastest saloons I've ever driven on a wet, wet track. I must say, this engine has really amazed me. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's lugging this big heavy car around with it, it's quite powerful and after 3000 rpm you really get a kick out of it. It's everything you expect from a sports car motor. Free revving, has a relatively high 7000 rpm redline and makes 51 kgm of torque. The top end is particularly strong and when it really starts pulling in fourth gear it can get quite scary your foot flat down, this car will reel in the horizon like a cheetah going for a kill. It will run to 240 km an hour with relative abandon and a few seconds later it will hit the top speed of 283 km an hour. The performance is really something else and we wonder what the 500 bhp Panamera Turbo will be like. Well I know this is a luxury car but the gearbox is a bit too leisurely for my liking. When you want to corner hard and you want a quick shift down, it takes a little while. Even on the shift up, it takes its own sweet time. But knock it into sports mode and then it becomes a different animal. It's instinctive and knows exactly what you want out of it. It even shifted from fourth to first when required. Kickdowns were impressive in this mode. Well, the nice part is this started off as a sports car and then became a saloon. So you can still expect it to handle pretty well. I'm putting it round the corners. Steering is quite direct. It's not as sharp and edgy as a Carrera, but you have to remember this has got a softer setup. It's much more for comfort, much more for luxury. 
can still have fun in it, which is the great part. Well, thankfully the rain was letting up and the track becoming nice and dry. A good time for me to check out the handling. Bottom line, does Porsche Saloon handle like a Porsche? Well, in short, yes, yes and yes. Sure, it doesn't have the agility of a Cayman, but then again, you can't expect something that uses up as much road space as a Land Rover Discovery to be so. The Panamera does understeer through tighter corners, but the way it takes turns with almost zero body roll and plenty of grip makes it a few notches above regular luxury cars, AMGs included. This car didn't have the optional ceramic brakes, but still, stopping power is strong and with superb pedal feel too. Now, with all of this, you expect it to ride harshly, but it isn't so. It's not a Merc S-Class, but with the suspension in comfort mode, it does a pretty good job of isolating you from the road. There is some thumping over sharper bumps and the ride can get lumpy at low speeds. But it's nothing you can't ignore. The only hitch is the sheer width of the car. It feels its size and you're constantly watching the edges. Parking can be a pure pain. But hey, what's valet service for? Once you stop and get out and look at this car, any apprehensions you have just fade away. As you can tell from its low and wide stance and unconventional looks, the Panamera is fundamentally different from regular luxury saloons. It's part sports car and part luxury saloon. No matter what angle you look at it, the Panamera challenges your ideas of conventional design. Porsche says its designs are all based on the 911 template. Whilst this works perfectly on a two-door coupe, the need for rear headroom here necessitates the roofline drops further back and quite suddenly. This is where, at least in our eyes, the Panamera's design is the least successful. Admittedly, after a day of looking at the car, it did grow on us. It's just that it will never look classically beautiful like the Quattroporte or a Jaguar XF for that matter. It's been a pretty fun car to drive, even in this level of rain, it's had good grip around the track. We've enjoyed driving it, it's a nice luxury saloon, but it's also a lot of fun to drive. It doesn't feel the size that it is. Now for God's sake, don't hand this over to your chauffeur. Sit in the front seat, get your hands on the wheel and drive, you'll enjoy this one.